Hi, I'm Miel Yonga. I would like to tell you something by hydrosulfide, H2S. Well, that's a, fat, a very poisonous gas that can only be detected by low concentrations. Why high concentrations are sense lowers and will not be easy to detect or even not detectable at all. But still, yeah, very, very dangerous and could be lethal. H2S comes in fact from a rotten organic parts that will give you the order of rotten eggs. Something that is detectable at as low as 5 ppm. ppm stands for parts per million, so it's one thousandth of a promo. So it's very very tiny and you can detect it already. And that's also the threshold where your personal detector, your personal H2S detector will go into an alarm and give you an alarm so that you know you have to evacuate as soon as possible on the spot. And the danger is not only that, if you go to higher concentrations, let's say 50 ppm, you will already get problems with respiratory organs and uh, you will get more and more irritations. Even if you go up to 200, you will get more and more irritations, even your eye and get a bit drowsy, sleepy, and the smell goes off. So, and also to note is that even the concentration is quite low, if your exposure is quite long, like in this case, 8 to 24 hours, this could also be lethal, already at that very low level. If you go up, let's say, 800 ppm, you would die within 2 minutes. Thousands would be immediate death. Clear to understand how dangerous it is. Certainly, uh, if you go into a practical situation, let's say a pipe containing H2S would break, or the break due to corrosion, or the break due to any kind of action where let's say a valve of even a small pipe would break, the concentration that you would get would be very, very high. We speak of 10,000 ppm at a distance of one meter. And that's massive. So when you know that 800,000 could kill you within a blink of light. So any gas leak would mean one or more death, and people could get very, very, very uh, severe attached within a very quiet light, uh, a very, very large range, let's say more than 100 meters. So that's typical. How dangerous this is. But then comes the question, what do you need to do as an employer, as a contractor? Well, there's a whole range of regulations on that. And I would really encourage you to start with very well turf based um, risk analysis. And then do it yourself. You have help for that. You have a prevention officer, and you even have your company's linked conductor. Sit together and make a good and well thought risk analysis. Take in consideration all hazards, risks, evaluate and mainly have a good idea on preventive measures. Once you get that, you can propose it to your PP committee to get it approved and that would be really a first step of a whole series that you have to implement within your company. And also, um, not only think about your employees, in case you would have subcontractors, there are also a set of regulations that you will apply. Do not forget that as a contractor, you need to inform and instruct your subcontractors. You give them, you need to give them information, and it goes both ways. So that's also one of the elements. If you have to work in chemical plants, it would be one of the things you have to cover. You have to make sure that you can think about and you have a whole set of preventive measures that are enough to adapt to work in a very safe manner. So that was a bit a small word, hydrosulfide, when you will work with chemical plants or whatever environment that this could appear, these rules apply. Bye.